I promised you some fireworks on my behalf, so I uh, hope you enjoyed the show. Now, I know that we already asked you this question, but let's make sure that everybody out here hears it as well. You've got some lessons to teach Spike O'Sullivan because the two of you don't like each other very much. You said you didn't really know him before, but now it's gotten into that point where we're going to see a pretty heated fight between the two of you. How did it get so personal between you guys? Well, you know, he has a big mouth. He likes to, uh, likes to you know, talk, uh, talk garbage on uh, social media. Um, I recently heard that he, beats, he, he did a big beating on his ex-girlfriend, so, uh, you know, this is the type of guy I'm dealing with, so, uh, you know, he might act in a certain way, but he's uh, really uh, not a guy, uh, not, not the best type of guy. I'm going to knock him out to make a lot of people a, f a favor. And following your last fight, do you feel like you have something to prove? I feel like we didn't quite see the David Lemieux that we're used to seeing in your last fight. So this time around, what do you plan to show everybody? Nobody wants to hear excuses, but the fighter is a human being. You know, I had my issues back in the past. I had my injuries. I had certain things I had to deal with. I'm at 100% right now. There's no excuse. You're going to see David Lemieux at its best uh, this Saturday, and uh, I promise you a great night. I'm coming back, and I'm coming back strong. I'm gonna knock this guy out, and I'm gonna take good, good care of him. All right, let's hear from the fans. If you guys wanna see a knockout happening. I do think, um, and he's looking a lot he like healthier this uh, time around. He posted a picture on his uh, Instagram. You know, it's been no secret that he's been having issues making 160 pounds, but he does not belong at 168 pounds. You know, I like David Lemieux. I like his style in regards to, to, to what he does. I do believe he's going to beat Gary Spike O'Sullivan, even though I like him too. But let's face it, David Lemieux, if you got a good jab and you can move, you know, you, you can beat David Lemieux. You know, all you got to do is just break his will. Now, he's going to come out there and try to swarm you. You know, there's certain fighters that I've noticed that David Lemieux goes in there with ultimate confidence and he destroys and there's certain fighters I know that he won't go in there, you know, like that with. You see what I'm saying? In the case of Gary Spike O'Sullivan, who's there to be hit, you know, it's a shame. Like, I understand people are entitled to their opinions and Spike O'Sullivan has been on a very, very um, good run since he lost in that horrible shit performance against... Uh, um, um, Chris Eubank Jr. I covered that. Did I cover that on this channel or on the last channel? Let's go back down uh, memory lane. Let's go back down memory lane. But you know, he is um like he he does have the power. For example, the win versus uh Antoine Douglas, which really had got him here, like um had me thinking like, okay, all right, but Antoine Douglas was already a mentally broken fighter from um, um, Advantadil uh, Kurt Cedis, who just got sentenced to uh, 10 years, by the way. Eubank Jr. versus O'Sullivan post-fight. I covered that fight, didn't I? Let's type in T-shirt. But um, if you don't know, this is going to be the co feature. I mean, it's not a co feature, it's an undercard. This is not a co feature. Yeah, this is me right here. Uh, look at this old ass video. This was uh, three years ago. Me covering uh, this. Thank you. I got to give me some more photos and shit in the back. Ew, is that an eye boogie? Oh, no, that's just the lighting. Man, that was me back then. But. Anyway, um, this is not a main, uh, I mean, this is not a co-feature. This is the Canelo Golovkin undercard. And this is also a showcase fight for the winner to go on to fight Canelo if he wins on December on regular HBO, uh, not pay-per-view. You know, Canelo's been on HBO regular fight, like, on, like, since, um, since, like, the last two years or some shit like that. So... David Lemieux, if he wins, he's going to get his shot. And, you know, maybe his real last run at a, 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 a title shot. And if Spike O'Sullivan loses, then, you know, he's going to be like, you know, like journeyman status-ish again. You know, I'm trying to give the man credit. But I've watched him fight. I've watched all of these fights, majority. And, you know, yeah, the Nick Quigley. Yeah, that was, a, that was an upset. 
and Antoine Douglas. This was a, a showcase fight before the men, uh, um, the day before uh, Golovkin Martirosian. He just stood there and allowed Chris Eubank Jr. to pound on him. And then the first loss of his career came to uh, Billy Joe Saunders. Obviously, unanimous decision. Billy Joe Saunders just boxed circles around him. But when you get a chance, I mean, he's got the one-punch power. He does have it. You know, I do, I, do, I do admit that. Let's go hear what he has to say, by the way. Where's he at? I hope that shit not true. You know, but you know how boxers be talking shit. But you also know how society is. You know, when they say, oh, he beat his girlfriend. Oh, we believe it. You know, that shit is whack. Both ways. The lobby and the man with some swag, some strut, Gary Spike O'Sullivan. Gary, only his mom calls him. It's that Spike O'Sullivan, 28 and 2, 20 KOs from Cork, Ireland, managed by Murphy's Boxing out in Boston. Packy Collins, the man with the busted up nose behind him. The reason I say that is because Packy always tells me I got the. But you know what? Sometimes you'd be happy for fighters like this when they get on this. Uh on this uh big stage it was really good for him to you know unite with golden boy because you know i don't know what he's getting paid but this is a big ass stage and then people are saying that the undercard is good and people are saying he's going to beat david lemieux which i don't believe i also did like how he threw uh his mankini at uh anthony agogo for talking shit anthony agogo had lost a fight and he threw like this fucking you don't you don't want to look it up it was horrible it was horrifying we're going to hear what he has to say, though. Also, you know, he's a character. He can sell. You know, he's uh, solid on the microphone. You know, I'm not going to say he's great on the microphone. But, you know, as you can see, his look, you know, his style, you know, he can sell. You know? It would be crazy if he knock out Lemuda. What if he knock him out? That would be crazy as shit. Then I'll, be, I'll believe. Then I'll believe. We're going to talk about uh, Jaime uh, Mangia, WBO, 160-pound um 154 pound champion versus uh brandon uh what's, what's his uh alias bad boy cook let's listen in she was kind of annoying but she cool now where's your fans come on fans i'm gonna upload this by the way the full one if y'all want to see it okay you 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 traveled all this way you are going to be fighting the biggest fight of your life. Talk about what that means to you. It means um, a great deal to me. It took 11 years to get here. Um, I'm here now. I'm ready. I'm more ready than I've ever been before. And uh, I'm ready to shine on the biggest stage. Uh, you are fighting David Lemieux. I mean, the Twitter beef that goes on between you two, it is quality hate. He just, he just said right now that he wants to teach you a lesson. And he made an allegation that you allegedly beat your girlfriend. That's below the belt. What are your fighting words for him, just why he said that? I think it's going to be the opposite way around. I think it's going to be a lesson for him. I think um, it's going to be the last fight of his career. I think uh, he's former world champion, but this is the end for him. He's going to be cooked. What do you see in David Lemieux that you're going to be able to expose? What do you, why isn't he a champion to you? Um, he's very one-dimensional. He does the same thing over and over again. Um, you know, he's like a one-trick pony. You know, every time he brings the same stuff to the ring, like uh, his social media, this is, is the same. Um, he says the same stuff over and over again. He's a boring guy. He's a pretty boring fighter. And, uh, one, two. Hey, everybody. How you doing, everybody? Checking a mic, too. You know, Coming to it. I can hear I read about you. You were a former sheet metal worker, a butcher, and a tree surgeon, and now you're here. You're fighting on the undercard of one of the biggest fights in boxing. Come on, tell me how you really feel. I know you're excited, but you're doing this for your family. You only think about winning and your family. What does that really, really mean to you? Well, I'm a very hard worker. I am. I've worked hard to get here. I've worked out throughout my life, and uh, I'm here now, and I'm, I'm going to take this opportunity with both hands. Um, it means a great deal for me to be here on this stage, and um, I'm looking forward to shining. All right, he's predicting a knockout. What is your, what's your prediction for your fight? That's going to be a knockout. He's, he's right about that, but um, not just the way he's talking. He's getting knocked out himself. Can you tell your fans, Ring TV fans, all your fans all around the world, your fans in Ireland, why they should tune into your fight and what do they expect to see of you that night? Well, I always bring an entertaining style. I fight like a Mexican and um, 
I'm Irish, but I fight like a Mexican. I always bring um, a good fighting style, a lot of entertainment for the fans. I believe I'm one of the most entertaining fighters in the world right now. And uh, that's why they should tune in and uh, check out the beat and the music going to get. Are you bringing your hat again that you wore at Cinco de Mayo in the ring? Um, the, that that uh, hat Robert D has got. Cringe! Cringe! I'm sick of it. Let's go look at the WBO rankings. I mean, the uh, rankings. Surprisingly, neither of these guys. No, actually, Lemieux is ranked at 168 by the W. Um, sometimes you're ranked in multiple divisions, but in the case, you know, in this case, you know, for the WBC, he's ranked um, at 168. So expect if he wins to be inserted somewhere in here in the uh, WBO uh, rankings. Let's see. Where is uh? There he is. So one of these guys is likely going to be ordered. Hmm. You know what's crazy? One of these guys, Jamal Charles was the WBC uh, interim champion. He's the next in line for the mandatory. But one of these guys could be ordered to fight. Jamal Charles is likely going to be fighting Willie Monroe. So one of these guys could be ordered to fight Martin Murray. Meaning the winner of Spike O'Sullivan and um, David Lemieux could fight Martin Murray to become the next WBC mandatory. But also, Demetrius Andre is the current mandatory, but also Spike O'Sullivan is ranked very high by the WBO and has one of them WBO underling belts. And as you can see, David Lemieux is um, right here. So, yeah, one of these guys is going to be getting a title shot within, uh, within we're going to say, 14 months within 14 months unless one of them slip into this ibf let's see he's ranked one of them guys could easily be you know ibf mandatory within a year get an ibf shot probably before they get a wbo or a wbc shot in regards to wba Murata, he's um fighting rob brandt for that WBA world. I forgot the exact date, but I'm going to be covering it and doing a fight week preview or preview video. And as you can see, they're both right here. So, they, you know, it's a lot at stake for this fight for these guys. You know, they've been around so long and the problems of their uh, careers, you know, they're in must win situations. Both of them, because it's not saying that they're not going to be able to get a fight again, a fight again, but not necessarily on this level. You know, David Lemieux, Let's go look at his resume and talk about it a little bit. Damn it. Why I keep doing that? I need to label these. 39, four, 39 and 4 with uh, 33 KOs. As you can see, he didn't make weight in his last fight. He was looking ghastly on the scales. But then, him, then again, him and Billy Joe both had to get naked. So from my understanding, right, then they both had to get naked on the scale. Marcos Reyes at a uh, catch weight. The Curtis Stevens fight. It was a damn shame what he did to him. Christian Fabio, uh, Fabian Rios. This was untelevised. This was like pay-per-view up there. They was tripping. Glenn Tapia. He's still fighting when he shouldn't. And then, of course, that uh, Golovkin fight where he lost that uh, IBF title after winning it from uh, the vacant um, after fighting um, Hassan Indom. Remember what happened with uh, Gabriel Rosado busted him up, Fernando Guerrero. This was um, over on Showtime when he really started making a name, like really, really, really started making a name for himself after this debacle down here with Joe Kim Alcine and uh, Marco Antonio Rubio, where he, like, he just was gassed out. And then Alcine just outboxed him. So, you know, he has been a world champion, and you know he like I it, it's safe to say he's more marketable than um, Spike O'Sullivan. You know the hair versus the stash, All right? But I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe.